Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video where we look at what happened in Game Week 11 and what my plans are for Game Week 12. Game Week 11 was very funny. The average global score was 32, but that will include a lot of dead teams and I suspect they did better than most active managers. So I suspect the real average score among those who are playing was probably less than 30 really. So we start off by looking at who did the best in the Midnight Mule Mini League for Game Week 11? For those of you that watched this series last year, you may recognise this name of the top manager. It was the daughter who drew the logo for Midnight Mule. <laughs> That's right. It's my daughter. She's the one that draws the mule. Her team is called Set and Forget because it was set before the kick of the very first ball and then nothing changed afterwards. No changing of the captain, no changing of who's on the bench, etc. Just leave it for the whole season. Top score with 59 points. That's probably better than any of the content creators you'll see out there. And that's what I'm saying about dead teams. And just while I'm on this page, some of you might recognise this name, BB United and Andre Bulbeck. I say that because I think he got mentioned twice last season for being top scorer. But this season, he's not doing so well. So my daughter's team, Jackson got 16, Fernandez 11, Trippier 9, Onana 6, Foden 6. And Saka, who was the vice captain, doubled, got four points. And then on the bench, Chilwell, obviously been out for a long time. Rashford didn't play. He was the captain. Turner and the stupid man. So that was pretty good. 59 points, having done nothing. Top of the league is still Daniel Chester's with Saka Potatoes with 744 points. And Daniel's team this week was Trippier for nine and Bremo for five. Captain Salah for four, and that's all. And on the bench, arguably nothing. So that was okay though, because everyone got bad scores, so it doesn't really matter. I am currently in 125th. I scored 38 points. That was Johnstone nine, Trippier nine, Matoma six, Salah captain four, and that's all. And then on my bench, no points. And I... I think I said in my video last week, I certainly put it on Twitter, this would be a good week for me to bench boost because I thought those were good players with good matches. So a bench boost would have been four points. Fortunately, I've already used my bench boost, so it didn't really matter. So 38 points, game week rank just outside the 2.3 million mark. So a little green arrow, so that's nice. I'm just outside the 1 million mark by one point and I'm 146 points from top spot, which is closer than I was last week. So we're still in the situation whereby if I can beat top spot by six points per week, then I'm going to win the whole thing. So let's keep aiming for that. 941 subscribers. Thank you very much to everyone who subscribes, who likes, who comments, and most of all, for those of you who watch the video all the way through. I think that's probably the most helpful. So the FPL Game Week website on here, you can see lots of stats, but you can also see popular content creators that that league and you'll also see where you would be in the league. So Luke from Inspected Goals is top, but someone who I watch, I see who I like to watch on here, FPL Fran is currently in second with 702 points. Oh, and incidentally, Luke, who's top 705, there are nine people in the Midnight Mule Mini League who are doing better than top of this league. Mark Southerns is 701, just one behind Fran, and then a few more points behind that is FPL Mate. So all of these I like to watch. Uh, they're all very, very different. Depends what your entertainment is. But I, I just like playing all sorts, seeing what people are saying. And I really like I really like watching their live streams partly through the weekend or at the end of the weekend and seeing how much they got right and how much they got wrong. As for me, I'd be down in 36th in this league if I was actually entered into it, which is I'm one point behind FPL Nymphria. Nymphria, I'm probably saying her name wrong. Now... Over the summer holidays, she introduced me, that is, I saw it on a YouTube channel, Ultimate Champions, which is a fancy football game, but it's for loads of different leagues across Europe. It's a lot of fun. Some of you may have seen some content creators advertising So Rare last year. I've tried So Rare and Ultimate Champions, and for me, Ultimate Champions is definitely better. So if you're interested in that, I'd say go and look at some of FPL Nymphria's YouTube about that. And you'll be able to follow links. And if you join up through her links, 
you'll be giving her a few extra points for that game. It's a lot of fun. I think you probably have to be 18 to play that, though. Uh, and I'm just above Big Man Bacar and a little bit higher than Oscar as well, FPL Focal. So at least I'm in good company there. Now my transfer options for game week 12. I've got two free transfers. I think I've got 0.1 million in the bank. And my default option is I'm actually thinking of burning a transfer. I don't think I need to make any transfers. and I'm more or less happy with my team. So there are a couple of options I could do, but I want to show my team first and then hopefully it'll make sense. So I've got Salah marked as captain. He gets to wear the old mule hat. And then his mate Darwin up front. Hopefully they both get some decent points this week at home to Brentford. And then I've got Matoma as my vice captain at home to Sheffield United. And then in goal I've got Johnston at home to Everton. Trippier away to Bournemouth. White at home to Burnley. Cash at home to Fulham. In the middle of the park I've got Sun away to Wolves. And up front I've got Watkins at home to Fulham. Now, my other two players are currently flagged, which is Saka at home to Burnley and Madison away to Wolves. We don't know yet if they're going to play. If by the weekend it looks like, or by the deadline, one or both of these are probably not going to play, then I'm a lot more likely to make a transfer. If it turns out actually they're probably going to be fine, then I almost certainly won't make a transfer. But if one or both of these are out, then we need my bench. Who's on the bench? Well... In goal, I've got Ariel at home to Forest. That's all right. Gel Pedro at home to Sheffield United. Very happy to play him. And he did start in Europe tonight. So assuming he doesn't get injured, that's good. Simicast at home to Brentford. I'm very happy to play him. He's on the bench because slight minutes worry. Is he going to get 60 minutes? That's why he's down there. And then even Pedro Porro away to Wolves. Although Tottenham have lost a lot of defenders, I'm perfectly happy to play him. If I do make a transfer, the most likely is Madison would be out for Bowen. That's if I'm not certain that Madison's going to start or I'm very nervous about Madison starting. But Bowen's not the only player I'm interested in. And as I've got two free transfers, there are several things I could do. So players that I'm interested in, and so any of these I'm about to show you I may get, although I've not worked out the exact mechanics, I may end up getting one or two of these. That's a stupid ant because it looks like he's back. He's certainly starting on the bench for Brighton tonight. Saliba for Arsenal. I know I've already got White, but I don't mind having two first-choice Arsenal defenders at the back. And if I get Saliba, then in the future weeks I can sell White and save a bit of money and still retain an Arsenal player at the back. And Buemo, I intend to bring him in a couple of game weeks' time. The downside of getting him now is if he gets injured, then it's another transfer getting rid of him. So... I think it's much better to wait until game week 14 before I bring him in, but I could bring him in now. I do like Fernandez. I've always liked Fernandez. He's been very hit or miss this week, but he is at home. I think it might be Luton this week, so I am tempted to get him. And then finally, Hoyland up front. For Man United, he keeps scoring in Europe, so if this weekend he gets confused and thinks it's a European game, maybe he's finally going to score there. And as for the picture this week, it's a broken clock because the top scorer in the league this week haven't changed their team and a broken clock is right twice a day. So maybe next season, if you're having a bad season this year, just make up a team and leave it and you'll have at least one good week in the season. There we go. <laughs> I hope that made sense. So I let me know in the comments what you think you would do with my team, but I really don't think I need to do anything and... If I can burn a transfer, maybe that's just what I'll do. Thank you very much for watching. Let's hope we all have a better game week 12 than 11. Um, thanks. <laughs> Bye.